This week's constellations are Ophiuchus, Serpens, and Scorpius. When we look in this direction in the sky, we're looking toward the center of the Milky Way galaxy, and stars get pretty crowded there, as you can see in this photograph, which was taken with a large professional telescope. This is a view of the sky that includes the constellation of Scorpius. This picture was taken in Hawaii, which lets us see the complete extent of the asterism for Scorpius. If we were in Washington State, which is more than 45 degrees north of the equator, we would not be able to see the southernmost parts of Scorpius. Here's what the asterism for Scorpius looks like. Maybe a bit like a scorpion, at least in the tail area. The brightest star in Scorpius is Antares, a word that means the rival of Mars. Antares is a red supergiant star, about 800 times the sun's diameter. It's actually larger than the orbit of Mars and puts out about 65,000 times the power output of our sun. Here's another view of this part of the sky. This one shows Ophiuchus and Serpents. This is the asterism for Ophiuchus. It's just kind of a big coffin-shaped figure. Ophiuchus is Greek for the serpent bearer, and Ophiuchus is supposedly carrying a snake, and you can see it here on either side of Ophiuchus. Serpens is what's on either side of Ophiuchus here. It's the only constellation that's divided into two parts. The right half here is called Serpens Kaput. That means the head of the snake. The left half is called Serpens Cauda, which means the tail of the snake. Together, the two parts of the constellation are just called Serpens. You may notice that the head of the snake looks kind of like an X. That's just the shape that I happen to see. And I think to myself, X marks the spot for the head of the snake. I find it easiest to find the head of the snake by using an asterism just above the head of the snake. Up here is Corona Borealis, the northern crown. And it's pretty easy to find off of a bright constellation to its right that isn't shown here. You may learn it later. And so I usually find Corona Borealis, then find Serpens off of that. Now we can see another view of this sky, one that includes Serpens, Ophiuchus, and most of Scorpius. We can't quite do the whole thing because these constellations actually take up a fairly large part of the sky. But there you can see Ophiuchus. Serpens, and this time I didn't bother to write the Serpens Kaput and Serpens Cauda on there. And remember, Serpens is split in two by Ophiuchus, and then down here we can see a bit of Scorpius as well. The portion of Scorpius that we see here is only a little bit less than what I see at 47 degrees north latitude. Uh, I can see just a little bit farther below what's in this picture from where I live. And in the lower left of this picture is the asterism for Sagittarius. That's another zodiac constellation. When we're looking in the direction of Sagittarius, kind of just above the spout of the teapot shape that you see there, we're looking toward the center of the Milky Way. Now let's take another look at Ophiuchus just to learn about the one star that you need to learn the name of in that constellation. There's that asterism for Ophiuchus. And the one star that we learn the name of here is Rosalhegui, which is sometimes spelled as two words. Either way it's pronounced Rosalhegui. The name of this star means the head of the serpent collector. 
so that's appropriate for Ophiuchus. It's actually a binary star system. It's about 19 light years away from us, which actually makes it a near neighbor as far as stars go. The larger of the two stars in the system is about 2.4 times the sun's mass, and it's spinning rapidly, about 88% of its breakup velocity. If it's spinning at 100% of the breakup velocity, it would fly apart just because of that rotation. Because we're looking toward the center of our galaxy when we view these constellations, this part of the sky is rich in what we call deep sky objects, those things we need a binocular or telescope to view. And I'll show you just a couple of the ones that we can see in Scorpius here. This is a, another picture taken from Hawaii, and it's an exposure that shows some of the milkiness of the Milky Way. When people started using telescopes, they realized that the milkiness was caused by stars that appeared so close together that our eyes couldn't distinguish them as individual objects. This field of view includes Scorpius, which, because this was taken from Hawaii, we can see all of again. And Sagittarius is over here on the left. Sagittarius is usually barely above our southern horizon, but it was high in the sky in Hawaii. One of the deep sky objects in Scorpius is Messier Object 4, which is right there. M4 is particularly easy to find because it is so near Antares. In fact, a single binocular or finder scope field of view will include Antares, M4, and another star in the asterism for Scorpius, so that makes an easy find. M4 is a globular cluster. There's a photo of it. It has an apparent magnitude of 7.1, which is a little bit outside the range for the eye under dark skies, but it's easily visible in small binoculars. It's one of the closest globular clusters to us, about 7,200 light years away. It orbits the center of the Milky Way galaxy just like the Sun does, but the Sun has a fairly circular orbit around the center of the galaxy. The orbit of M4 is a highly elongated ellipse where at its furthest approach from the galactic core it's about 10 times farther out than at its closest approach. Another globular cluster that's in Scorpius is M80. This is another easy find because, again, it's so close to Antares and other bright stars. Here's a telescope photograph of M80. M80 is more than four times as far away as M4, the one you just looked at. It's about 33,000 light years away, which means when you look at it, you're seeing light that's been traveling for 33,000 years. But it's nearly as bright as M4. It's got a magnitude of 7.9. Again, an easy find in binoculars and small telescopes. The reason it's nearly as bright as M4 is because it has many more stars. M80 has several hundred thousand stars in it. These deep sky objects barely scratch the surface of what's in this part of the sky. But that's it for this week's constellations.